One of the customs of the Noble Ones is to delight in developing and to delight in letting go. What is those are two activities. We're not just letting go. We have to develop something to hold on to first. To think of the image of the raft. First you have to bind the raft together so you have something to hold on to as you go across the flood. In this case, as we're meditating, we are letting go of a lot of things outside, but we have to have something good to hold on to inside. Otherwise, we just drift around. So you choose one object, like the breath, and you keep reminding yourself to stay here. The activity of mindfulness is not just being aware of things or accepting things. It means keeping something in mind. There's actually quite a lot to keep in mind. First, the object you're going to stay with, and then learning how to recognize when you're doing it well and when you're not doing it well. This is something that you develop with time. This is what makes meditation a skill, so that you're not coming to each present moment as a fresh moment. You're trying to remember what useful lessons you've learned from the past. When you're focusing on the breath, where is a good place to focus? There are instructions that can tell you to try different spots in the body. You remember those, but then you remember particularly the ones that you've tried and have worked out in the past. Then you remember different ways of thinking about the breath. And John Lee recommends thinking of the breath as a whole body process involving all the nerves in the body, all the blood vessels in the body. So when you breathe in, the whole body is breathing in. When you breathe out, the whole body is breathing out. And you want to develop your awareness so it fills the body. And then you watch the breath in that context. What kind of breathing feels good? It's good to start with some energizing breaths long and deep. And as long and deep breathing feels good, you keep it up. Then after a while you, you let it calm down until so things feel just right. Then you let that sense of just right spread through the body. This is work you have to do. And John Lee calls it concentration work. We think of the different images that the Buddha gives for the different levels of right concentration. The one for the first jhana actually employs somebody who's working, a bathman, mixing water with bath powder to make a bath dough. In those days they didn't have bars of soap. They would have a soap powder, which they mixed with water, and then you took that dough, lump of dough, and rub it over your body. And the duty of the bathman is to mix it so it's just right, not too moist, not too dry, and that all the powder is moistened. So you work on that with the breath and the sense of ease going through the body. You notice areas where the breath doesn't seem to be flowing well. How can you relax those areas so that it does flow well? This is useful in lots of ways. To begin with, it helps you sit for long periods of time if the blood and the breath are flowing through the body well. Everything's nourished. You don't get numb. And when the awareness is broad like this, it's very hard for it to go into the past or into the future, even though there may be memories of the past, as when you're being mindful. Still, you don't go into those memories. You don't turn them into little states of becoming. We slip off and travel around the past for a while, slip off and travel around the future. You stay right here. The fact that your awareness is so broad helps it from prevent it from shrinking down so that it can turn into a little world that you enter into. So there's work to be done, but it's good work. Work with a sense of ease, sense of well-being. And only when you've done this work, then you start letting go.
rest of the direct of thought and evaluation so that when the breath feels really good throughout the body, you realize you don't have to adjust it much anymore. You don't have to talk to yourself about it so much. You can just be with the sense of breath, 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 breath coming in, breath going out, and that's it. That's all you need. And you can stay here. But to get there, you've got to do the work. Otherwise, if you just stay with the breath after a while, you begin to lose focus. If you don't make the effort of developing a full body awareness, it's very easy to lose focus and just blur out. This is a skill we're developing here. All, I wouldn't say all, but many of the Buddhist images for people who are meditating involve people with skills, cooks, carpenters, soldiers, archers. People who work to master their skills and are willing to do the work. So we're not just letting go. And John Fu, my teacher, was never one to get involved in Dharma controversies. He just liked to talk about how to do the practice. But there are a couple points that he would make on controversial issues in in Thailand, one he said, the people who say it's just letting go, letting go, they're telling you only half of the story. The other half is that there are things you've got to develop. Because when you let go, what happens? Well, you can find a, a nice peaceful, peaceful state of mind. But then if you just let go, let go, without developing the discernment to see well, what creates that peaceful state of mind. There's an awful lot you're going to miss. There is the activity of discernment. It starts with a directed thought and evaluation. And it continues. As you get the mind into deeper and deeper states of concentration, it's going to involve noticing what the mind is doing that's excessive, ferreting it out, and then dropping just that, not just drop, not dropping everything. Some things you have to hold on to. Even in the state of nothingness, you have to hold on to a perception of nothingness. So you're not totally letting go. But it's learning how to let go precisely that gets you into the deeper states of concentration. And that requires a lot of observation, a lot of experimentation to see what works. So when things get really still, you don't just stay there. This relates to another controversy you mentioned one time. There was a teacher in one part of Thailand who was not a member of the forest tradition. He made a lot about the idea of what he called temporary nirvana, when the mind just sort of settles down and it doesn't have any sense of clear sense of I or me in there. He said, that's it. That's a taste of temporary nirvana. And as John Ford noted, the whole thing about nirvana is it's not temporary. It's outside of space and time. How can it be temporary? These momentary states, or these, even though there may be more than momentary, but these states of stillness that come and go, they're just states of concentration. They're not fully purified. They're not fully analyzed. There's a lot more work that has to be done. This relates, relates to another issue, that whole question of the passage where the Buddha says that the mind is luminous and is defiled by visiting defilements. And there are some people who would identify that as saying, well, that's a, the original state of the mind is luminous and it's pure, and we're getting back to its original state as we meditate. But as Jean Mahabhu noted, the Buddha never said pure, he just said luminous. And there are lots of luminous states of mind, none of which are awakening. Then there's that question, if the mind was originally pure, and yet it somehow was able to be defiled, then once you purify it again, what's it to keep it from getting defiled again? And 
fact, he identifies the luminosity with the, the ultimate the ultimate defilement of the mind, which is ignorance. And the Buddha talks about what he calls the ultimate mastery of concentration, which is when everything is luminous. He says, but that too is inconstant. That too has an element of stress. So it's not awakening. But if you settle down in a luminous state of mind and say, well, this must be it, you're still not doing enough work. You have to settle in and have to get very, very observant, very, very sensitive. Where is there still some inconstancy in there? Where is there still some stress? To what extent does the level of stress go up and down? And when it goes up and down, what, what did you do? When you notice that, that's when you can ask yourself, well, how do I let go of this? And that requires more work, more directed thought, more evaluation. And you can take that apart. And then you find something that the Buddha calls what you've never reached before, what you've never attained before, what you've never realized before. In other words, it's something totally new. You realize it's been there all along. But all the activity of the mind, even the luminosity of the mind, has obscured that. Although to say it's been there all along is not quite right, because it actually is outside of space and time. It is something apart. And to get there requires some work. Years back I was reading a manuscript of a book saying there are basically two approaches to the practice. One is that you have to create a nirvana as you meditate, and the other is that you realize when nirvana is always there, there's nothing to do. In fact, anything you might do might get, will get in the way, so you simply relax, and there you are. The author had asked for some feedback, so I gave some feedback, which is, well, there's actually a third alternative, which is that you don't create nirvana. It's already there, but you're not going to get there simply by relaxing. There's work that has to be done. And John Lee gives an analogy. He says it's just like saying there's fresh water in salt water. But if you want to get the fresh water out, you don't just let it sit. Because the salt is not going to separate out on its own. You have to distill it. And the distilling is the effort. So there's a lot we have to let go, but in order to let go, we have to do some work. And we may like the idea of somebody letting go, letting go, letting go. We also have to learn how to want to do the work, to delight in doing the work. So we can reach what we've never reached before, attain what we've never attained before, realize what we've never realized before. It's only then that our practice is complete. <laughs>